Support for Radio Friends comes from OsteoStrong. Improvements in bone density, strength, and power can be achieved by weekly five-minute no-sweat sessions on their four-spectrum machines. These isometric robotic machines safely emulate high-impact loading on different parts of the skeletal system, which stimulates activity in bone-building cells. Balance and agility can be improved by two-minute sessions on vibration plates. Every session is supervised by a trained coach. Learn more on Facebook or call to set up a complimentary wellness assessment and session. Good morning. Welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, July 30th. We have Dr. Anand Chakalingam with us. Good to have you here. Pleasure is mine. Heart specialist, heart doctor, all around good guy. Thanks yeah. so much for having me, Paul. Uh, we we talked about this in the past, and that's fasting, right? Now, we talked about it last year, and you told me when you came in here today that this segment that was on the web has had over 100,000 views. Is that correct? Yeah, close to 140,000 views already. 140,000 views. So you're reaching a lot of people with the news about fasting and heart health. Let's start off, first of all, fasting. What is it about fasting that's good for the body? This we discussed uh, last January of 2019 in the pre-COVID world. And uh, I think at that time, people really wanted to connect with the heart health, and intermittent fasting. That's why it got 140,000 people viewing it and liking it. Today, I wanted to revisit the same question, what we can do in the COVID world that might help our health. So I'm glad you gave me this uh, opportunity today. The word fasting, I believe, has been around since civilization. Before civilization, it has been in the form of nature. What I mean by this is, throughout evolution, for millions of years, food has not been for granted. It has been something we seek, and uh, on a lucky day, we get sufficient quantity. Otherwise, the energy we, we have to expend to procure the needed amount of food has always been a lot, by which I mean many days during drought or flooding or uh, uh, natural challenges, we might not get sufficient food and our genes have evolved to survive and actually rejuvenate when there is not enough calories that goes into the body. But fast forward to the civilized world, which is for the last 10,000 years, we've had sufficient food because of agriculture throughout the year. Fast forward to the last 50, 60 years, where there is so much marketing that uh, we feel instead of two or three meals, we are having five or six meals a day. So several times we eat and we end up with the overnutrition. That is how life has become. And to the point that in 2030, it is predicted, U.S., which is already the world leader in obesity, is going to have more than 50% of people being unhealthily obese by 2030. So, so, so this the, is the uh, challenge that we are facing in our country. In this, this is the world's highest amount of obesity in the whole world. 50% is going to be by 2030. That is the prediction. Now, how can that be when there are many people in the world who have no food at all? Even, it's a big inequity. Exactly. There. Even within the United States, about, uh, they say, because of the COVID challenges that have started this year, Food insecurity is becoming a bigger and bigger challenge. It is predicted even up to a third or even more of families with young children currently in the United States is food insecure because of so many issues, loss of job, loss of economic uh, output and other restraints. In developing world like India, they say it's more than 50, 60, 70 percent of families are struggling to get sufficient food. But despite that, when I come up to you and I want to bring the point of fasting, the reason for that is this is happening simultaneously. It is the poor and the socially underprivileged who end up getting the unhealthy food that is uh, increasing their risk for obesity. The paradoxes go together. So poverty in Africa manifests as very thin, marasmic, 
born and thin such are of children whereas in the western world and in some developing countries uh, poverty manifests as obesity because of poor av- availability of lesser choices and uh, again and again people resorting to fast food and uh, unhealthy choices that is okay. what we are seeing so if we are in good health are you saying that it is appropriate and actually good for our body to fast once in a while i started this in the middle of 2018 once a week or once in 5 days i would go without food for 24 hours you go without food for 24 hours yes, yes. now you're not harming your body by doing this and this i've been teaching my cardiac patients who are in their 70s 80s who had bypass surgery and who don't qualify for new revascularization so many health challenges despite being on 20 medicines i've recommended this and we have seen tremendous results so far so much results that i'm actually changing it instead of calling it intermittent fasting which i believe is the initial step for people who have a little bit of excess weight who have bmi of between say 25 to 30 they can try intermittent fasting once a week but for heart patients and people who really need to lose much more weight over the next 3 to 5 years our program we are calling it hunger based gratitude experience hunger based gratitude experience it's the huge h u g e it is a form of i would say a self inquiry it's a meditative process where i simply ask my patients what are you grateful for very quickly they are able to connect with their grandchildren or gardening or playing golf or something that they are passionate about despite their health issues then i remind them connect with that gratitude at a deeper level and from that find the strength find the 20 smiles an hour through which you will be able to stay without food stay with that hunger little longer so intermittent fasting means we don't have food for a day and then the rest of the 6 days we have reasonably normal food whereas this Uh, self inquiry or meditative process which we teach called hunger gratitude experience okay. involves not uh, uh, looking at uh, hunger as a painful experience we look at it as a uh, grat- grateful or meditative experience which my patients have shown me whereas intermittent fasting you can do for a 20% calorie restriction whereas with this self inquiry process people have shown over the last 2 3 years they can go for 50% calorie restriction sustain it and feel so much more energetic and uh, give up out of 20 medicines they've given up 16 18 medicines so basically they are curing 8 out of their 9 or 10 heart problems all right i tell you what you you <laughs> you make a lot of sense here i will try it at one point i have to get myself in the right frame of mind for it Dr. Anand Chakralingam, thank you so much for all coming back. all this information is available on highlifejourney.org. So I'm welcoming everybody to okay. listen to these videos and highlifejourney.org. Thank you. And you have a good day and I appreciate you coming in here today and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks. All so right. Much. You go out and about wear that mask. We'll see you. Bye-bye.